Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about the two big features Intel is adding to the x86 architecture these days. It was recently disclosed, and uh, I want to familiarize you with this big change coming. So first one is AVX10. AVX stands for Advanced Vector Extensions, and I don't know what 10 stands for. <laughs> so <laughs> the idea behind this is very simple. So right now, Intel is enumerating features one by one. So when you, whenever you want to use some instructions, you check for multiple CPU ID bits. So we are moving to enumerating everything with a single umbrella uh, CPU ID in leaf. So every, every future hardware Intel will be doing will be supporting some version of AVX10. So we are, and then next generation <coughs> will basically bump up uh, the version number. That's it. And along with the version number, there is also uh, a notion of vector maximum vector length supported. So the claim is that every next CPU Intel will be doing is going to support AVX10 version one at least, and then the vector length of 256. So this makes it possible to migrate uh, code between the hy hy in hybrid uh, CPU settles, right? So you can run on P core, on E core, whatever you whatever you want to do. So what again at a glance, this is a major evolution since uh, AVX2. So AVX2 was the previous baseline ISA for Intel. So now it's AVX10, and how it is different? It's adding more registers, 16 more registers, uh, eight mask registers. And it will also include the embedded rounding for YMMs. Today, only 512-bit instructions were, were able to use embedded rounding. So now it will be backported to 256. Like I said, uh, every, uh, every hardware will support AVX10 on 256, but P cores, the performance cores, will continue to support 512-bit uh, for compati backward compatibility. Only P cores will be supporting 512. And it's inclusive in the sense that each next generation will include all of previous generation instructions. So it, it must make things easier to check. And quick, quick uh, introduction how it affects compilers because we, are, because we are at the compiler conference, right? So we are adding these new options to target the new uh, hardware. Uh, at, at, the, at the request of the communities, both GCC and LLVM, we are adding this proxy option, which basically uh, says use whatever current uh, target is, but suppress all of 512 instructions. So basically, you will be able to create a proxy binary that runs on today's hardware. And it will serve like a proxy for your future uh, uh, change to uh, AVX10. And then, as normal, we are adding AVX new target for AVX10.1 with this specification of vector lengths. And uh, AVX10.1 basically will run on the on the future uh, processor codenamed uh, Granite Rapids. Or, you, of course, you can emulate it today. Uh, and then there is also evolution to AVX 10.2. Yeah, the, the, the most performance is coming for, from more registers. That's one thing. And all the modern instructions that were backported from 512 to 256 and will be supported on all Intel hardware. All right, this one is more interesting, I guess. Uh, it's because. It's a major evolution of general purpose ISA. So what I said before, it was about vector instructions. So this is a general purpose in, uh, uh, instruction improvement that we are <coughs> putting to 64-bit x86. Again, like with AVX10, it will be supported on all future Intel CPUs. 
uh, what it does, it does 16 more general purpose registers encoded with a new prefix. It adds a third operand to, so, to implement so-called non-destructive destination. Uh, I will show later how, how some of these are implemented. So all the new state is XSafe enabled, but it doesn't create more uh, XSafe area because it overlays with uh, deprecated uh, MMX state. So there is a list of, complete list of new uh, things that have been added. I will go into some of them uh, with more details. And again, we wanted to be uh, backward compatible. So our default application binary interface is going to be backwards compatible. So you can interoperate uh, APX with the, the current code, the current x86 code. OK, some details about some of the features. eGPR, so now you have 32 GPR, right? general purpose registers. And our implementation principle was that we wanted to, to the code to be least intrusive. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see a pseudo code that how we added things. Basically, we, uh, we uh, remained everything unchanged. And uh, oops. So, so, the, so basically, we play with the register class here. So we added a new class to represent new registers, and then we before uh, before register allocation, we just change the, the the register class. So the code changes are minimal, uh, and that was the goal. New destination register. Someone translates it's non-destructive destination, the same acronym. So the pre principle is, uh, again, we, wanted, we want to use NDD uh, always to reduce uh, pressure on the memory. So that, I mean, with, with non-destructive destination, apparently you get uh, less spilling because you don't have to basically save your original source somewhere if you still need it. So the value is, yes, like I said, it's reducing the pressure to the memory subsystem. Uh, so yeah, it's, the diagram is just shows that we still are able to use a legacy instruction if for some reason you don't need your, one of your sources. So when, when you know that source is killed by the instruction and not used afterwards, you still reuse uh, one of the source registers as a destination. So you get a short encoding still whenever third register is not needed. PPX or PP2, those are, um, so because we added more registers, uh, we needed to do something about uh, a prolog and epilog, which become much bigger. So we added an instruction that uh, pushes and pops two register at a time. It's just two, no more. So one optimization apparently is to use push, push two instruction to combine some of the pushes together. But another optimization, another optimization is PPX, which is, it's a new hint basically to the instruction that uh, uh, that improves the uh, story forwarding. So basically, whenever a push is known to be followed by a synced uh, pop, then it is a hint for the hardware to avoid going to memory and basically forward the value from the push to the pop. Memory renaming is another term for this. All right. I guess I need to skip something. This one is good. <laughs> I'll show this last one. Last one. So, whenever you have uh, um, cascaded basically uh, if com if can if operations, right? So 
C example where you check one value and then check another value. So now we, instead of doing control flow here and jumps that are maybe um, predicted bad, uh, we are moving to, we are creating an instruction that executes a, a compare conditionally. So based on the condition from the previous compare, you now are able to execute a compare under the condition from the previous instruction. And what it does, it basically, it follows the, the existing C move idea that you uh, basically speculate more execution. And it's a conditional execution. And this simplifies the control flow, which reduces the pressure to the branch prediction unit. Same, same we do with the load store. Yes. And like I said, this has been disclosed. Some patches already landed to LLM, and we will be adding the rest uh, in the next quarters. That's it. Thank you, Sergey.